And these rights scattered all over the disk, it's just boom, all in one place. And once you do that, then uh, you have you know, all that, that I.O. completes, you know it's all there, you know, any RAID Z stuff has all been dealt with. Uh, then and only then, uh, the last step is that you write the Uber block. And the, the Uber block, there's not just one Uber block, there's actually typically several thousand of them. And so, but I, I did not have time to explain how we manage Uber blocks. But anyway, the or Uber block that represents this checkpoint gets written. Okay, so the entire pool is always consistent because when we write that Uber block, either we haven't written it and we have the old version or we have written it and we've got the new version. Okay, so as I've already said, the checkpoint affects all the file systems, all the clones, everything in the pool gets snapshotted at once. Okay, and as I also said, you need to log changes between the checkpoints in order to have persistence. All right. Recovery starts from the last checkpoint. So you find, you come up, you find the, the Uber block for the most recent checkpoint, and you find the, the intent log, and I mean, you find the intent logs. There's one for every file system and every Z-ball, and then you just roll forward through the log, and this, you know, as you go through the log, it's like write this, do that, do these other things. It just builds up a whole bunch of stuff in memory, just like you would from normal operation. And when you've got all that done, then you do a checkpoint and say, okay, boom, we're now all caught up and uh, we can reset the logs because we're ready to, to, to move on. Okay, so what actually is involved? So in, in, you know, I say we've got all this dirty data, but let's just look at what we actually have to do. So this is what you would have to do if one file had one block added to it. Just to give you an idea, there's nine things that are going to have to be changed. What we start out down here in step one is there's the actual new data that got written. Okay, that's not too surprising. But since we have added another block to the file, that means that let's say we have a single level indirect block pointer here. We have to update that single level indirect block pointer with the new pointer, or with the pointer to the new data. And we can't change the existing single indirect block, so we have to make a copy of the single indirect block with the update made to it. And if it was a double indirect block, we then have to potentially, the, 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 the block above it would change because this has changed, therefore, the thing that points at it changed. So you have to trickle your way all the way up through all the indirect levels until you finally get to the I node. And now, of course, the I node is pointing to a new block. So the I node, or the, the new D node, has to be written. Uh, and then that, because this has changed, that is going to change the effect of this file, which means we have to trickle all the changes up through all the indirect blocks uh, here uh, up to the object set. Now the object set has a new pointer, so the object set has to be rewritten. The object set's been rewritten, so therefore the, files, the thing that points to it has to be rewritten, which means this thing has changed, so we have to change all the indirect blocks that go all the way back up to the top here. That has now changed, so we have to make a new copy of that. And then finally the last step is to point to that thing. So we, we figure out all the blocks that have changed all the way down from steps one through eight. We gather all of those now modified blocks we write them out, and once we, we get confirmation that they've all been written, then finally we update the Uber block. So the Uber block is the only thing that we ever overwrite in a, in a CFS file system. We've got to update space blocks. Sorry? We've got to update space blocks. Uh, yes, oh yes, the, the point, he's pointed out that uh, I allocated a block out of the space map. So the space map has to change, uh, and if you uh, back on this previous slide here, you'll see that the space map is it's a file. So you know we changed one thing here, so we had to change all the indirect things up to here. So this changed, and that that'll come in with this the change that happened here as we trickle them up through there. So yeah, another you know three four blocks have to be allocated and dealt with. Okay, so the. Uh, you can see why we can't implement F-Sync simply by taking a checkpoint. Uh, the, the amount of work that we have to do, the amount of space that we need to allocate is such that uh, it would be 
just way too inefficient to do that. Now, it looks really bad because of all the things that trickle up here, but supposing we had two files that changed in this file system, uh, <coughs> there'd be a, little, a few extra blocks for that file, but then all the rest of the stuff trickling up here, we've already had to change it all already because of this first file. So it, it's, you don't get this much stuff for every modification that occurred, and that's why if you aggregate together a bunch of changes, uh, the overall, the, the cost of this trickle up is not nearly as bad. Uh, we've already had to update the space map, we've already had to update all of these things, and so just updating one more file is not nearly as bad as the first file that we had to change. All right, so I just want to sort of finish up by summarizing sort of the strengths and weaknesses of ZFS. 